Hello everybody, it's Hardy with electronic test equipment and we are looking at a Fluke 23. This is happens to be a Mac ET-23 DMM, same thing as the Fluke 23. What we're looking at here is kind of a very light, light display reading. Now the kits that we sell are designed to Uh, fix these displays when they're faded or missing segments but the rest of the LCD segments segments should be nice and clear and, and very dark uh, notice these are very light you see how that looks there so we're gonna take a look at this to see if we can change out these elastomers to see if it's gonna fix this problem I don't think it will uh, but we'll see. So we're going to break this meter down. I'm going to show you how to break it down and I'm going to show you how to replace these elastomeric connectors. These elastomeric connectors come in the kits that we offer on our website at lcdrepairkit.com and so I'm going to insert these new replacement parts, the elastomeric connectors. So uh, Stand by and we'll start the breakdown process. Remember this guy? This is the Fluke 23 with the faded display. And right now we're going to break it down, take it apart, and we're going to replace the elastomeric connectors with these gray ones. And we're going to see if it's going to fix this faded display problem. I'll show it one more time. This display should be very dark and clear, but as you can see, it's uh, it's very light. It's very light, and some of the problems we've seen is is customers contact us and they 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 buy the kits uh, for this problem, and I think this is the only time where these kits won't really do much good. So at any rate. We're going to take this thing apart. So we need one Phillips head screwdriver and we're going to unscrew the four screws on the back case. So we've got the four screws removed here and we're going to take it apart. We simply just work along the edges and the top case, the top case comes off. So it'll be the top case and this rotary switch that'll come off on its own. This is what it looks like on the inside. So this is the inside of the meter. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to unscrew a PCB set screw that's underneath this fuse that's holding, it's, it's holding the main PCB board onto the bottom case. So I'm going to unscrew this one. Before I do that though, I'm going to remove the battery. It's always good to remove the battery and discharge and just make sure that there's no form of power because if you're poking around here with a screwdriver, you don't want to short anything out. So I've removed that battery. We've got the little fuse here. We've got the big fuse here. And we want to get up under the big fuse. And in these models, they use the 15 amp fuses. These are the meters that use the 15 amps. If you're not sure, Fluke's PCB boards are always labeled. You can see down here, right here underneath where the screw is, next to the screw, it says, uh, F15 amp, 600 volts. And that's how you can always determine what type of fuse you're going to need. It's there right next to the screw. And we're going to remove this screw right here. Removing this screw will free up this main PCB. So don't lose this. 
don't lose this little screw here. You need that. We're gonna sit over here with the others. You just want you don't want to lose it. Is this spring action here? This spring that uh, goes between the main PCB and the bottom case. Be mindful of this. Make sure you're working in a clear area so in case this little spring pops out you can find it easily. So here we are. We're looking at the main PCB and we're going to remove this LCD face mask. Now the instructions that we've produced in the past uh, suggest using some type of flat head screwdriver to remove this LCD mask. This may or may not be necessary, but keep in mind that these meters, as they get older in age, this plastic becomes more brittle. If you're comfortable to use this, if, you're, if you feel that you need to use some kind of straight ed flat edge to kind of pry up under here and lift this up to uh, unseat it, See, I've unsecured it from the top here, so I'm just going to kind of finish releasing it, and it just, see it falls off. You can see it's got these kind of posts, post-like around the edges on the bracket that this snaps over. And so now we see the old pink elastomers inside here underneath the LCD. I am going to remove this LCD along with the pink elastomers and we'll take a look it's going to be, uh, you can hear it unsticking, listen okay this is perfectly normal so normally you're going to have these uh, older units, these older elastomers kind of stuck in place on these LCDs. I want to catch my bearings, make sure I don't put it back in upside down. Anyway, let's tear these off. These are the old. Won't be needing these. And this is the part number LCD. This is the flute manufacturing part number. So, all we're going to do now is drop in the new elastomers. We'll just pop in there in place. And we are going to reseat the LCD. Just place those over. Always make sure that you don't have your LCD in upside down. But before we go any further, while it's still apart, I want to look at the back of this. Sometimes you will see a display that will be completely dark around the edges, almost in a circular fashion, uh, and it'll be faded. And then the center will, of the display will be the only clear part. What you're seeing is this back tape or reflective material that is uh, due to age, the glue is just kind of breaking down and is starting to come undone around the edges. So that's what happens when you see that. Maybe some of you have experienced that, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, no worries, no big deal. We're going to put the LCD face mask back on. The pointed corners go on the bottom, the rounded on top. So let's start at the top, secure that, and then push down on the bottom. There we go. It's nice and secure. So on this one, uh, insert the top section first, and then start applying pressure to the bottom section to snap it into place. Now that that's secured, we want to put it, screw it back into the bottom case. And we've got our spring here. So we're going to put our spring on here like so, and then we're going to insert the main PCB, and 
we're going to insert this little screw back into the main um, little section here under the 15 amp fuse. We don't want to screw it back too tight. Just as soon as it gets tight, that should be good enough. I'm not even sure if that would qualify as snug, but we'll just say snug. And uh, we're going to insert the 15 amp fuse. And we are going to insert the 9 volt battery. And finally, we are going to apply the top case. And before we screw it back down together, I'm just going to give it a turn on here to see what we're dealing with. And there we have it. So as we can see, replacing the elastomeric connectors did not fix this type of faded display. So if your display is looking faded in this manner, then uh, our kits won't work for you. Replacing these elastomeric connectors won't, won't address this problem. However, if it's nice, clear, and dark LCD segments, but maybe a few of the segments are light or faded like this, or missing, uh, then replacing these elastomeric connectors will solve that problem. What we're looking at here is a, is a different issue and uh, I'll make a video later on whether or not it's necessary to replace the entire LCD or if it's something that can be uh, done for the do-it-yourselfers simply maybe by re uh, removing and replacing the reflective uh, backing to the glass on the LCD. I hope you found this information helpful. We'll see you on the next video. Until next time, take care.